Welcome back to the Dot is Black, I'm David. May I introduce you to the Hydro H pen plotter by Unatec. I have received this plotter about two months ago and I have been working with it for some time and I would like to take the chance to introduce it to you, but also to share with you my experiences. Therefore this video is not just about a review, but actually it became a review slash tutorial. But I think it is important because there is a lot to unpack in this plotter. So I will talk about the assembly. I will show you the pen holder plate. I will talk about the basement plate, the software and plugin, the home button, test plots, lots of test plots. I will do some speed tests. Particularly, I will compare the axi draw with the eye draw. And lastly, I will show you the laser engraver. Because on one side, we have the stepper motor with the pen holder plate, which is of course the pen plotter. And on the other side, optionally, we can install the laser module. And that is quite interesting and I would like to cover it. So let's have a look at the iDrawPenPlotter.com website first. In the shop we can see variations of this pen plotter. Most notable are those two. The left side is the iDraw 2.0A3 plotter, which I have done already a video review on it, which you can also watch on the channel. And on the right side we have the iDraw H. The biggest difference between those two is the additional Y axis on the right hand side with an additional stepper motor. Otherwise, those two plotters are quite similar, except that the iDraw H with the additional y-axis promises much higher speeds with a much higher precision. Here we can see a few specifications. So first of all, the working area is A3 size. It's slightly bigger actually, but it's 42 by 29.7 centimeter. We have the four 42 stepper motors. The precision is 0.01 millimeter, which is rather standard. We have a writing speed of 12,000 or up to 12,000 millimeter per minute, which I will also test. This is quite remarkable. It's a very fast plotter and it's a very heavy plotter, so 4 kg. So that means it's also great because it adds additional stability. One particular feature is that this plotter provides us the option to, to install a laser module and the laser module is specified here. So we have three variations, 500, 1600 and 2500 milliwatt laser power. And we have the same engraving area, which is very large for such a laser module. Now we have two versions. We have the version with the base plate and the other version is without the base plate. So basically that's how it looks like. I think that depends on you, which one you like to work. The difference is that the driver board or the motherboard is on the back side and with the basement it's here below. I personally prefer the basement on the back side but um, the basement is actually very useful because the di price difference is only 20 US dollars. I would take definitely the plotter with the basement. We have also here the engraving heads and I would also suggest if you in case you want to have it it's fairly inexpensive. I would rather take this 2.5 watt laser module because everything else is becomes too slow especially if you want to engrave and then I check the AU plug in my case and I say add to cart once here you can type the dot is black for the coupon code and you get 50% discount which is quite significant because then the price is about 595 US dollar including international shipping if you use this code then you also support this channel with it. So thank you very much in case you like to buy this plotter or any other plotter on this website. All right, once the box arrives, the pen plotter is pretty much pre-assembled. Everything is tightly wrapped in foam. And once you remove the foam, you should have several components. The first one is, of course, the mainframe with the base plate, two y axes with two stepper motors and the microcontroller. Then you have the X-axis with another two stopper motors and the pen holder plate. You will have the USB cable, 1.4 meter long, cable ties, Allen keys, the pen holder brackets or the pen holder bracket with eight magnets, the power charger, 1.4 meter long cable. And in case you ordered the laser module, you should also have protection glasses, very important, a power charger, this time 12 volt and two ampere and the laser module itself, in my case 2.5 watt, and another metallic plate with screws and nuts that are attached to the, that will be attached to the panel the plate and more cable ties. Let me show you now the assembly. So first 
I'm unscrewing the nuts and pay attention also to the position of the washers. They should be on the inside. Second, I take the x-axis with the stepper motor on the left side and place it carefully down. Put back the washers on the inside of it and the nuts, but before I fasten them, I move it slightly up and down to avoid any tension or any twisting of it and carefully fasten the nuts on both sides at the same time. Once this is done, let's connect the cables. The cables are all perfectly labeled. So first one is the X motor with the X cable, then the Y1 motor cable with the Y1 motor, the in cable with the bridge, and another cable is the Z motor cable for the pen holder plate. And once this is done, let's go on the other side of the pen plotter and connect the Y2 cable with the Y2 motor. That should be done. Now the last thing is the pen holder plate with the bracket. There are a couple of screws, but one is actually enough and I'm just doing it right now perfectly vertical, so at 90 degrees. Additionally, I'm plugging in the cables, the power and the USB cable at the driver board. Before we continue, I'd like to give you an advice on the cable spiral sleeve. Cable cord does not really give any stiffness to it. So when you, for example, want to record some nice videos of your process, it will always maybe cover the drawing. And I find a small solution to this quite useful. I use a bigger cable tie and I slide it inside the, I will slide it inside this cable cord and then it will give it a bit more stiffness to it. All right, there you go. So it's nicely here, perfectly. And I will do the same, for example, on that side. And then I will just start to attach the cables. Here we have also the cable tie and we can attach it just to one of those legs, for example. So it's going to be always standing in the same location so it doesn't move around. Perfect. Now you see, this is working pretty well. The cable sleeve always moves back always goes back to its position above the x-axis. Let me show you the back side of the pen plotter, which mostly we never see really. I hope you can see it nicely, yep. So we can see here there is the microcontroller and the microcontroller you can move on the side in case you want to remove the base plate for example. We have also in the center a crossbar, also aluminum crossbar that is also attached with some screws here uh, to the main frame. So in case you want to remove this part, you can actually unscrew these parts and then you just simply remove it. Those two screws are for the uh, paper clip on the front side. Um, additionally, you can see also we have here the legs, the rubber legs, they're on each corner. And they're actually quite good. Um, they're very nice, stiff. They have also a lot of resistance and they're all perfectly leveled. The pen holder plate is very special and it deserves some attention because it's different than what you see in other pen plotters. First of all, you see there is the stepper motor, which is very powerful and has a lot of speed. It's definitely better than just a regular servo motor, like you find in Oxydraw, for example. And it has a belt here. There is a belt which is connected with screws and on one side we have one spring and then on the other side we have another spring that is keeping the belt stiff, so it kind of pulls it always back and it, it stays also on the wheel here from the stepper motor. And this setup is very important because, um, first of all, the stepper motor increases the speed, so you can draw much faster, it goes quickly down, up and down, up and down. Additionally, we already saw there is one spring on the other side to keep the belt uh, stiff, um, but we have this second spring that is connected to a screw with a long hole here and that is a very important setup because for example sometimes we want to use different pens not only ink pens but maybe also like pencils and with the long hole we can open up on the other side we can open on the other side the screw and then pull down the spring a little bit more to add additional pressure on the pen itself i hope you can see it so here is the screw on the other side and we take the allen key and then simply open up the screw. 
There you go. And now I can move it down a little bit. And then I close the screw. Now you can see the spring is stretched, so there is additional pressure, so it definitely pulls it down the pen holder plate much more. So there is perhaps even too much tension now. There is actually a lot of, you can see how fast the pen holder plate falls. So that can also be a problem, for example, when you have a um, pen tip like this one, and it's a more softer pen, and it will definitely be flat after a while. So you can also damage the tips of the pen if the tension is too high with the spring. But it's definitely great for color pencils or just regular graphite pencil, it's amazing. Let's set up the paper or the canvas. So I take an A3 page and I place it into the, uh, within the markers on the base plate and I'm using the magnets that are also part of this package. And that's it already, it's nicely set up. This is almost like a plug and play device, so you don't need to do anything else. Now let's place the pen inside. To place the pen inside is quite easy, so you just take a little magnet and then just put the pen inside and let it simply fall on the top of the pen. Then you tighten the screw and you just move it away. And then you have about like three millimeter distance, which is perfect for quick drawings. Now the pen holder plate is already perfectly calibrated, so when you have it vertical, then the pen always starts exactly where the drawing board starts and it's always calibrated for the vertical part. However, if you for example want to make an inclined pen, you will not be able to get to the edge in this case. So what do you do? Well, you just simply open up these screws on all four sides actually of this drawing board and then you can slide, there you go, we open up and then you can simply slide it to the left side or to the right side, depends on the orientation of the pen. To install the software go to iDrawPenPlotter.com, select your pen plotter and then scroll down there is a link to the software and user guide. You will have here a couple of options. I'm clicking on the link to that redirects me to the Google Drive and I select my operating system and then you have two choices how to install your softwares. Additionally, you can go to inkscape.org and then you download the latest version. I select Windows. Once you download it, please install it. In Inkscape, I suggest you to open first the document properties. This is here and then select the format of your canvas and standard it's usually A4. Uh, we work here right now on A3. Additionally, go to Extensions and then select iDraw 2.0 Control. Don't mistake it for iDraw Control because that's another plotter, is iDraw 1.0. In 2.0, very important, I think that's the first thing you should always do, or everyone, go to Options, Config, and then select iDraw A3. Sometimes it may be A4, depends. So it should be always A3, otherwise nothing works, and then you press Apply and it says everything is connected properly. Additionally, just a few things to say. If you want to plot anything that is on the canvas, whatever you draw, uh, here this is where you do it. So you go to plot and apply. But before that, you should always set up your plotter, like the pen, the speed, the timing of it, probably some previous you can check, the read through the advanced and also through the config again. I want to point out three important things when you work with the iDraw or in general any pen plotter. So when you go to the plugin iDraw 2.0 Control, there are two things that you should always make use of. First, go to the options and then check the auto-rotate page when printing. So in case you maybe work on a landscape format or portrait format, so the plotter will automatically orient your drawing towards the canvas. The second part is the plot optimizations. Always use basic. Or at least choose basic, never choose none because it will take forever, unless it's very intentional. The drawing will take forever to draw. And the third thing, which is extremely important as well, you should always use, is the auto home command or button, literally. So every time you place your pen inside, please come here and press apply. In case you change the 
pen, for example, from red to blue or blue to yellow, green, whatever. Then you also come back here and press the auto home button and then it will always be perfectly calibrated with your drawing on the, in the screen as well. This is a very important feature. All right, let's do some test plots. And those of you who have watched my previous review videos on pen plotters, you will perhaps remember this. Um, it is a very simple drawing. First layer is a grid of dots, which is also quite nice because you can see the behavior of the plotter. Then it's a grid of horizontal short lines that connect to the dots and eventually long lines, long diagonal lines that again connect the dots with the short lines as well. So this is done now, the test. Let's have a look at the final drawing. And as we can see, in this case, I hope the light is not too bright. There you go. So everything is perfectly fine. The next test plot are circles, where the start and end point of the circles must meet again at the same precise location. Likewise, the arcs or the circles must also overlap in the same position on the right hand side. The result looks pretty good, no problem. So you can see here where the line started and it ended also, or the, the, the arc started, it's perfectly as well. Nothing, nothing unusual. Same here also in the, where the lines overlap is also perfect. Let's test now the plotter with a pencil. A pencil is always very difficult because plotters usually need to exercise additional pressure onto the pencil. Otherwise, the graphite doesn't really interact with the paper. And I already talked about this before. This pen holder plate is actually perfect for any kind of pencils, whether it's a graphite pencil or color pencil. And we can also see here with these lines. Likewise, you can see also once the plotter hatches, the areas in between the lines and it's always very nice and even it's actually really good also you can see the speed you really can see the speed when it, the plotter is changing directions from left to right when it becomes a very short line and i think this is really really remarkable all right let's do the speed test this is the first of three and on the left side you have the axis draw a3v3 and on the right side the i draw h uh, for which I have changed the max speed to 14,000 mm per minute in laser GRVL. I'd like to compare those two plotters with each other so you also get a better feeling how the iDraw H compares to the Axidraw itself. And as you can see already, the drawing is particular. It is a very long continuous line where the pen plotter is just moving from left to right without lowering or raising the pen itself. And because it's such a long drawing, Let's do a time lapse, 50 times the speed. One thing I'd like to mention is the difference between the Axidraw and iDraw. The Axidraw has two stepper motors that are moving the X and Y axis with one belt only. Whereas the iDraw has four stepper motors, two for the Y axis, one for the X axis and one for the stepper motor itself. And that makes a big difference. So now this is finished and you can see the iDraw has been faster. The Axidraw needed 23 minutes and 32 seconds, whereas the iDraw needed only 19 minutes and 30 seconds. And that means that the Axidraw has been 20.6% faster than the Axidraw. Again, it's very important to understand that it's a one continuous line. But this was not the only purpose of this test with a long line. Let's find out the actual speed. So first of all, we have here in Inkscape the drawing itself and we can go to visual path, then measure path and then the tool opens up and we can, we can measure the length and we can also change it to meter, which is about 252 meter. Now let's calculate. So we have the length of 251,824 millimeter and we divide it by 19.51 minute and we get the result of 12,907 millimeter per minute. So this is the speed of the iDraw H with this particular drawing. 
Now, it's not exactly 14,000 millimeter per minute, probably because the 14,000 would be the optimal case when it is a one continuous line without making any changes in directions, like basically moving left and right. However, this is extremely fast already. It's almost optimal speed. So I'm very happy with the result. And of course, it's faster than the Axi draw. Let's do another test. I'd like to test here now short lines, and I will write text uh, for both plotters. And it's actually quite good to work with the text as well, because many short lines, many curves, many changes of directions. However, you can already see on the axis draw on the left side, um, the writing is quite unclear, because the pen holder plate doesn't have any springs, so it doesn't really add pressure on this ballpoint pen. So I need to use a rubber on a uh, on the pen holder plate, but this is not maybe the best possible solution. This is actually what Axidro was including, and it uh, can damage the servo to lift up and down the pen after excessive usage. But let's do it again, and this time again with a time lapse, eight times fast. And you can see already on the top, on the left side, this is the previous drawing, which is a bit faint. And it's already done. That was very fast, right? All right, so let's have a look. The eye draw already finished at 38 seconds and the axi draw needed 88 seconds, which means the eye draw has been 50 seconds faster or 231% faster. And that is, of course, the strength of the eye draw age. It works extremely fast when it comes to short lines. Here we can also see the results and we, the difference is, of course, the lines with the eye draw are bolder, clearer, they are more crisp. All right, let's do the final test, the third one. And in this case, I will draw an apple with hatches. On the left side, again, we have the axi draw and on the right side, the eye draw. And you can see already the axi draw is at max speed, but it's much slower already. Of course, there is a different plot optimization, but the huge difference is, again, the pen holder plate and the acceleration. It's just simply everything, the speed is much faster with the iDraw H. Especially pay attention to the very short lines or even the dots. It's incredible fast. And because it's, again, a bit longer drawing, so let's do a time lapse, 50 times the speed. And it's quite quick on the iDraw, whereas the Axidraw still needs some time. Now both are finished. So the eye draw needed 258 seconds or four minutes and 18 seconds, whereas the axi draw 12 minutes and 33 seconds. That means, that's massive. The eye draw has been 495 seconds faster or 291% faster. So that's pretty much the 300% faster drawing speed or writing speed as Unitech advertises it on their website. So we get very, very close to it. And I assume we can even increase the speed if the lines would be even shorter. So I assume it can be even, it will even exceed the 300%. All right, let's talk about the laser engraver. The laser engraver is rather easy to assemble. First, we take out the metal plate and attach it with four screws to the laser module. Each screw has to be fastened so there is no movement. Likewise, there are four brass sleeves that also have to be attached to the metal plate. Once this is done, we can attach the laser module with the metal plate onto the pen holder plate. The laser module is attached on the opposite side of the pen holder plate with four openings, two on the top and two on the bottom. And again, the screws must be fastened properly. Once this is done, we need to use the cable ties and attach the cable from the laser module onto the cable cord. This is how it looks like in my case. And you can also, of course, clip the cable ties. Last thing, let's connect the cable to the driver board. Very important. With the laser module, there is an additional adapter, so you have to change it. The laser module, it must be 12 volt with two ampere. Now it's very important to understand if you work with the laser, um, the laser might burn through your paper when you have something. So you should always have on the bottom um, different types of surface. For example, you can use cardboard sticker, maybe like three to five millimeter. That already helps to prevent any burn of your base plate. Or 
perhaps the best option is a metallic plate, so like stainless steel. However, uh, for that case, in this case, it might be dangerous because um, it's reflective. So when the laser comes down, there is no protection here around it, then it might reflect back. So the best solution, in my opinion, is if you use just a basic cardboard or even just a, um, wood, plywood or anything else, MDF board, and that will work. And then on top of it, you just put the paper or the material that you want to engrave on. Before you start any work with the laser engraver, make sure that you wear the protective glasses. There is a reason why I'm saying the glasses, because the laser here is exposed on the bottom. There is also the focus below, and usually many lasers have a protective acrylic, like for example this laser, and when it's down, uh, the laser cannot reflect back into your eyes. Here it's more exposed, so it's kind of very different. Therefore you have to use always the protective glasses. First thing, we turn on. You can see uh, it's running and there is a blue light. There is also a switch. If you turn it off, then it becomes yellow. And that means that the laser cannot be turned on anymore. So it's a manual switch. You cannot turn it on with the computer. If you want to use it, you have to make it blue light again. So that's a very important switch. The two most common software for laser cut and engraving are GRBL, which is for free, and there is Lightburn, which is perhaps the most common one and most popular that I'm also using. Now, first thing, when you open Lightburn, you have to click on device to import the eye draw. And I already have here three different lasers. Those are my own. Then I click on find laser, next, and Lightburn is searching for the eye draw. There it is, it's called GRBL, and that's also the size, all A3, COM10, everything is fine. Then we say add device, and I change the name to iDraw. Then the next thing is the origin of your laser. Uh, according to Unitec, it has to be front left, and also turning off auto home. Next, and everything is okay, finish. There is our iDraw now, perfect. Now, next thing I want to, I have to go to the console here and click on iDraw or select iDraw. There it is. It says everything is okay. We have connection established. Perfect. Before we start to engrave, I want to show you a few things because we also need to calibrate. So you have to go to the device settings and enable the laser fire button. Enable fire button. And the fire button is now here. This is for calibrating. We can set it up, for example, at 10% fire power. And then we press it when we calibrate. And not yet, at this moment. I will show you now one file that I already did for this review. So here, this is the file I was using for the review. And you can see I have a couple of layers. The first layer, it says here, this is my apple. Uh, I just imported a picture that I will also engrave. And laser engravers are like printers, more or less. They work with dots per inch. And if I double click here on the image, then I can also specify more precisely how Lightburn will translate this image onto the material with the laser. And here we have lots of options, so I suggest you always to read it. Now, first thing, I want to set it up to 2,500 millimeter per minute and power is 100, so I already tested it before. And there is a couple of different image modes, like for example, this type of image mode, Atkinson or Halftone. And perhaps the best one is actually the Jarvis. So here it is. Once you set up your layer, you can go now to preview, and then you will see how it looks like. The other layers that I set up, I can turn it off. You will see here is basically, I just have like a, a square that I want to cut out. I want to show you. I have also the text, draw, I draw H, for example, that we will see. I have also a grid here nicely that I cut out. I have another type of grid that I want to cut out and also the edges. And I put everything on a separate layer and you can also see in the first part is 300 speed and 100% uh, power. This is how I already calibrated to find out what are the best settings for this laser. But let's first calibrate the laser. Before you begin to calibrate the laser, make sure that you wear your green laser safety glasses. You don't want to damage your eyes. To turn on and off the laser, you can press the fire button in light burn, but make sure that it's not more than 10% power, laser power. 
If it's 100%, it will burn through the materials and you cannot really calibrate. Now this small black coated metal sheet, it's about the size of a credit card, is from a different laser machine, but it's quite useful in this video because you can see the laser spot better. But you can also use any other material, especially like black cardboard, for example. However, it should be straightforward because the goal uh, of calibration is to minimize, to make this laser spot as tiny as possible. And on the bottom of the laser module, there is a lens that you can unscrew. It will take some time to calibrate it, so you basically have to unscrew and see how big it is. And for that purpose, this black coated metal sheet is quite useful because it not only makes the laser visible, but it also makes sound when I move it because the laser scratches on the surface and the louder the pitch, the more precise it is, the smaller it is. In Lightburn, when I press home, the laser always comes here back, just like in the pen plotter, because there are contact buttons on the bottom here. However, with the Lightburn, you have to always push it, push it backwards. So the surface is the same in Lightburn, however, it always starts from the left, bottom left to draw, so you have to always manually pull it back. I find it a bit inconvenient, but I think this is just a firmware upgrade. So I think Unitec will maybe probably improve the software because like two or three months ago, this uh, upgrade for Lightburn wasn't there yet. Okay, let's do some engraving. Um, let's do the apple that I showed you before in Lightburn. And as you can see already, it takes up some time. So let's do a quick time lapse. And the apple is gaining shape. It's very lovely. It's actually really good. But before we look at it in detail, let's also engrave I draw H into the cardboard. It's, the cardboard, by the way, is about like two millimeter thick, so um, it's quite standard, literally. But now, now let's look at the detail, and it's very lovely, actually. It's really, really good. It's a very small uh, apple, so smaller drawings or smaller images are more difficult to engrave. Larger are easier if you have the if you have, if you have a good image resolution. And also my fingers, you can see there is suit. So this result is very good exactly what you would expect from a laser engraver. However, let me just maybe emphasize, you saw this example and it took actually quite a long time to find the right settings. These are some trial and errors on white paper that I have been doing and nothing really worked. So the white color reflects the laser so the details simply disappear. So it's either very dark or it's literally bright, too white. Now let's do one more test. This time let's cut and you can see already it's much slower than the engraving. So engraving is always very fast because it only scratches on the top of the surface or it burns literally the surface of the material. Whereas the cutting has to go all the way through the material. And here we have right now just only 200 millimeter per minute. So literally a tenth of the engraving speed. And sometimes, depending on the material, you need to maybe adjust again. So it might be have to be even slower. This is a very weak laser, 2.5 watt, yet it can cut very well, in my opinion. Two millimeter cardboard in this case. Let's do some yellow cutting. Precisely a yellow cardstock, 350 gram per square meter. And it's actually quite interesting because lasers react differently with different colors. So you have to also adjust different kind of settings and power. So in this case, I'm using exactly the same thing as before with the card stock or cardboard, sorry. And it's 200 millimeter per minute and 100% laser power. But this is now done. And I'm also doing the square around it. So cutting it out precisely. And then I make another one, which is the black one, because that's a beauty of having a laser cutter in general. Uh, you not you don't need to anymore draw you're actually cutting things out and the drawings become stencils beautiful stencils okay this is the result the laser cutting it's quite nice so those two pieces perfectly cut together and now we can use it now that has been a lot of laser talk, but I've done also a couple of other drawings, of course, not just what you saw, like nice vases, or here this one as well, with different colors. I uploaded some shots or videos on YouTube, so you can watch that, and including even a beautiful portrait of Mona Lisa. So it's actually quite challenging. It's very, very fast, this drawing. 
12,000 millimeter. So it took about one and a half hour to plug this. I draw H is amazing when it, when it comes to short lines. It's just a, such a pleasure to watch this very quickly evolving, the drawings. Final thoughts. So this pen daughter is quite amazing. It has this very rigid frame, as you can see, as you, you saw in this video. It has on both sides the, the y-axis that gives it extra stability, especially for high speeds. So in case um, you draw very short lines or curves and you are running at max speed, so the entire desk might, might shake. However, because everything is connected with each other, the base plate with the frame and the pen holder plate, even the desk is shaking, the drawing will still be perfect because it's just one piece. So that's quite amazing. And additionally, we have of course those uh, four stepper motors that give high precision and speed. And the most important of course is the pen holder plate with another stepper motor that gives the speed. So those are the huge advantages of this uh, pen plotter. Now a couple of things of course, um, when we talk about the base plate also, I don't necessarily like this, this um, paper clip. You can remove it, just unscrew it, and that's what I will do also after this review. Additionally, I don't necessarily like too many buttons. I would prefer to place the microcontroller or driver board on the back side. It's easier to access and it's much cleaner here. So that would definitely make an improvement. And you, it would also make it easier to perhaps remove the base plate in case you want to work on a, um, without it, for example. Last thing, we have the laser module here on the back side, which is also quite nice because it is a hybrid now and it might look quite technical now as aesthetic as it's maybe as it was before with all these cables but nevertheless i think it's a, an, an interesting addition it does have a few flaws in my opinion like for example when you and when this is the home button and you have to always do it manually sliding back to put it in place and then from here it starts to work so i think this should be upgraded in the firmware Additionally, of course, I don't like that there is no protective cap on the bottom, so we have to always wear the glasses. Um, I think this would add definitely some additional uh, safety to it. Um, otherwise, the laser module is quite good. I mean, 2.5 watt laser power is sufficient enough to do some nice laser engraving and it's fairly inexpensive because you get for 89 US dollar in this case um, you get a laser module with an incredible large area 42 by 30 centimeter and most of the laser machines that are dedicated for engraving and cutting they start at 200 usually 200 US dollars some proper ones and they can go up very high like 400 to 1000 and even more US dollar but the cheap ones at 200 dollar they usually are very small like about 1800 by 1800 millimeters, so 18 by 18 centimeter. It's about this size only. So you have here much bigger working area. So I think this is a, quite an interesting addition. And of course, it allows you to work um, with two different mediums in the same machine. So you just simply switch between softwares to use them. This was the longest video I've ever done for this channel. And I think it's worth it because, or it's necessary because there is simply not enough good plotter reviews on the internet, especially when it comes to video reviews. And it's very hard to get a feeling for a plotter or in general just to understand how plotters work. So I was trying to look at this plotter thoroughly through from various angles and show you as many aspects and components as possible, including of course the areas where it could be more uh, improved but I think those are minor things that every plotter has there is no perfect plotter in my opinion now many people compare it to the Axidraw any plotter that they want to purchase but I think this iDraw age it's almost the same price but it's cheaper but I think also it's better first of all it's a machine so it doesn't look as aesthetic as the Axidraw but definitely it has the performance the performance is much better whether it's the pen holder plate or the speed or simply the the machine itself it works excellent the results are excellent and additionally if you perhaps look for a laser cutter or just to test maybe the first time 
the additional cost is minimal because first of all you get a very large working area and you get a two-in-one device and that makes it even better because suddenly it opens up for you opportunities to work with different media and I think that's what this tool is about so you literally have a very versatile machine that you can apply in different ways you can grave you can cut you can draw you can also draw on different kinds of materials so I think that's a very good addition to anyone who is in the creative field, but not only, of course. Now, I hope I have been thorough enough. I hope I could give you a good sense. Please keep in mind, um, you get 15% discount if you use the coupon code that is black. And with that, you, of course, support as well the channel, perhaps for future reviews of other machines. Um, but if I have missed anything out, maybe, or if I've been unclear in some areas, let me know down in the comments and I will try to answer your questions. Otherwise, I know that some of you who have been watching this video already own an iDraw and perhaps you would like to share your own experience with it. I would like to read about your experience and what you think about the iDraw yourself. That said, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.